Hey guys, looks like it's beer 30. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews. Today, today's beer comes from Martin House Brewing. These guys are down in Texas. Uh, and I'm probably going to butcher this up. It's K-A-F-K-A-E-S-Q-U-E. Kafkaesku. Uh, that's the best pronunciation I can get out of what, what's written here. Uh, and this is a big beer, guys. 10.3% alcohol. Uh, that's what Beer Advocate and uh, Untapped both has it listed as. Uh, I did not see it written on the can. Uh, yeah, it is. It's written right underneath here where it says, on the can it says, Imperial Smoked Black Rye Oaked Raspberry IPA. 10.3% ABV. Uh, I don't see any kind of dating on the bottom of it. That kind of needs to happen as far as I'm concerned, guys. Uh, when you're producing an IPA or a double IPA, uh, we need to have that. So I don't know how big this brewery is, how long they've been in business. But guys, if you're going to get into the beer business, craft beer business, you probably need to start thinking about getting a dating machine. And like I said, I don't know if it's distributed or you can buy it only at the brewery. I don't know anything about it. Uh, Brandon didn't send me a note or anything telling me any kind of history or how he purchased it, whether he bought a can or a four pack. Pretty sure it'd be a four pack and not a six pack at 10.3%. So, uh, kind of been limbo on uh, additional information there. Uh, and it's got a great big long description, guys. Uh, bear with me because I'm probably going to read it. Uh, I'll do the best I can as quick as I can here. We took the definition of Capcasque seriously when we created this beer. Our brewers viewed it as a challenge to create a beer so complex and bizarre that it would make Franz himself proud. We started with an Imperial IPA, then we transformed it into a rye IPA with a menacing portion of rye malt. Then we made it disorient disorientingly black with some heavenly roasted malt. We needed more complexity, so we made it surreally smoky with cherry wood smoked malts. Lastly, we added 300 pounds of raspberries for fruitiness, and everybody knows you can't have a complex berry without wood, so we let it sit on toasted American oak. <clears throat> we knew that you will, we know that you will find this imperial smoked black rye oak raspberry IPA to be very capcasky, cask, capcasky. So whatever the hell capcasky means, uh, I have no idea. Uh, like I said, it's ten point three percent. Untapped has it at ninety five IBUs. So, uh, uh, other than the date, we got the ABV now. We got the IBUs from Untapped, uh, but we do. I, I'm assuming that it is a 2018 edition, guys. Uh, Untapped had the regular version, then they had a 2018 version. So, uh, I'm just assuming uh, that it's a 2018. I don't know. There's no date on it. Could be a 2017. Don't know. So. Uh, <coughs> Let's get the thing opened up. Let's pop the top and get it into the glass and see what it looks like, smells like, and tastes like. And since it's considered a black IPA, they're calling it, uh, that's not technically a style yet. I heard that it's getting ready to be uh, released as a style. Uh, food pairing, this has none yet. Uh, glass wire pint. Becker Nonic Tumbler Mug, Stein Seidel Oversized Wine Glass. I'm using my favorite tulip glass today, guys, and not recommended for extending salaring. Another reason we need to have a date on it. So we know how old it is from when we buy it. 
and whether it's been cellaring on a shelf somewhere. Like I said, I don't know what the distribu uh, distribution is on this beer. So, get that up there where you can see it. Nice finger of head over into the light. It's pretty dark, guys. Uh, might be a little red rubiness down the thin part of the glass there. Looks a lot like a porter in the glass. Let's get it to the nose. Very complex, I will say that. They've added a lot of stuff to this beer. Rich roasted malt. I'm getting the raspberries on the nose. A little bit of smokiness. Almost smells like cherries, but it, as it when it's cold right out of the fridge, it may uh, when it warms up may kind of lend over back to the raspberry. But it, a little bit of fruitiness going on there, whether it's raspberry esque cherry aroma, maybe a little bit of chocolate. It smells pretty good. A lot of stuff uh, in producing this beer with everything that they've done. So let's stop in and see what we got. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Brandon. Oh, yeah. Definitely getting the raspberries. Oh, yeah. And I got a feeling that's just going to get more intense as it warms up. Roasted malt, raspberries. Slight hint of some chocolate, definitely getting the smoky esque woodiness of the beer. Pretty nice. Definitely a complex beer with everything that they've done. Awesome lacing that's already leaving on the glass. So, usually it tells you it's a pretty well made beer. Just wish they'd put a date on it. Especially since it's an IPA, guys. It's actually considered a double or imperial IPA. Being 10.3%. So, well, let's let it warm up. Sip on it. Let her taste it. And we'll come back and see where it ends up. Alright, guys. I'm back. Been sipping on it for a while now. Nice slicing. It's leaving on the glass. Uh, almost drinks just like a, a black ale instead of a black IPA. The, uh, the hop notes, even though I'm sure they've hopped it up to balance the beer out, because it does taste pretty balanced, you're not getting any kind of hop presence. Maybe just a little citrusiness in there, but no big time grapefruit, pineapple, or pine, or any of, the, any of that kind of stuff, because the raspberries and the uh, dark malt, the roasted malt, is basically covering everything else up as far as the hop characteristics go. But... Uh, with 95 IBUs, yeah, it's it's up into the uh, the IPA range on that. So if you're expecting big super hop notes on this, you're not going to get them. Uh, but it is a very tasty beer. Uh, definitely get the raspberries. The raspberries are off the chain here. I mean, 300 pounds of raspberries in the brewing process, you're going to get that. You're definitely going to get that. So uh, alcohol is super well hidden for a 10.3%. Very enjoyable, a very nice change up from your typical uh, double or imperial IPAs with the, everything that they've done to this beer. Very impressive. Raspberries are there. I mean, the raspberries are taking up the whole front seat, maybe the back seat too. Definitely getting that. As far as IBUs, 95. Uh, it's, it's not doing anything crazy but you can tell that, that, that it's there very different I mean uh, everything they've done to this beer makes it different uh, with the raspberries and the oak and the smoke malts and, and, and everything that they've done they produce a very unique beer it is, it's a unique beer you know, if you're not into the fruitier style beers with the raspberries and stuff, you may not like this. Uh, this is not something I'd want to drink every day, but it is a nice change from the typical Imperial IPAs. Especially, like I said, with everything they've done. Final joke.
very tasty beer guys it is a very tasty beer uh to me uh, other than not having a, any kind of dating on it that's the biggest bus i've got because uh, you can find out what the abv and the uh the IBUs are on it by going to untap, but we still don't know how long it's been in the can. And I'm just assuming this is the 2018 version. Uh, I'm not sure. I am not sure because there is no date on it. I'm sure if this was the freshest thing Brandon could pick up. Uh, and if they did this particular beer last year, uh, we don't know. We don't know. So I'm not giving a heavy maltiness or anything to the beer. So I'm assuming that it's fairly fresh. It's very enjoyable. It's definitely not a malt bomb by any means. But if you're expecting big, super juicy, hot presents, they're not there either. So, uh, and I understand why with all the other stuff they did. That kind of masks those, uh, those aromas and tastes with the raspberries and stuff. So, very enjoyable, guys. I'm going to give this a minus 90 is where I'm going to put this. Let's run over to Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says... 3.88 uh, that's in their B plus range I think it's a little better than that uh, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing I try to be as honest as I can guys I think it's a little bit better than a B plus uh, and if it had a date on the bottom of it it'd probably even get a, a better grade than what I'm giving it so uh, uh, over to untapped untapped has also at 3.98 that's um, B plus a minus you got to grade those guys on a curve so uh, uh, I usually I don't consider those guys numbers till they get to the four range to be into the A category but like I said you got to grade them on a curve so for the benefit of the doubt let's just say that's at the bottom scale of their A minus range so uh nice beer if you can get your hands on this like I said I don't know what the distribution is from Martin House Brewing down in Texas uh, if you can get your hands on it give it a try uh, you might like it and if you've had this one, uh, let me know what you think, guys. Until we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge.